Welcome back everyone, Drake Hawkins with again for episode 5 of 5 of our tutorial walkthrough here. We're doing the 5 uh, basic tutorials here. We are now onto multiple domes. <clears throat> this is going to teach us the basics of how to interact with the passages and the passovers and how people use various domes being connected. Welcome back, Commander. In this tutorial, you will manage a larger colony that consists of multiple domes. Excellent. As you expand your base and try to obtain various resources uh, scattered across the map, you will in inevitably end up with a colony that consists of several domes. This tutorial will introduce you to a lot of physical, uh, of typical situations that you can expect to come up uh, to come up in a big colony. So we have two domes here. Oh, look at that. We got a dome way over here. Shuttles can transport resources and colonists across great distances. The complex technology needed for shuttle flying in the thin Martian atmosphere typically must be researched. For the purpose of this tutorial, however, it has been already granted already granted to you to construct a shuttle hub. Alright, so the shuttle hub first is our first piece here. Let's uh, make sure it sits just right where he wants it. Wonderful. <clears throat> Let's get this rolling. Look at all those busy happy little creatures getting to work on the shuttle hub. It's a pretty expensive building. Uh, 10 concrete's not a big deal, but 10 electronics and 15 polymers? Mm-hmm. Not particularly great. Ah, we got some uh, new metal supplies within the drone hub range. Got our uh, little shuttle dude. Where is he at? Let's bring him over here and uh, do this sort of a deal. <clears throat> uh, since we are waiting on stuff, we'll go ahead and apparently we can't put in any storage. Ha! <laughs> That's brilliant. Okay. Uh, no storage in range? No, that is well Pipe planned. Pipe leak reported. Ah, really? Well, that's awkward. The drones will take care of pipe leaks automatically. As soon as it uh, happens, it becomes a priority work order. Uh, I think we also needed to connect this to the power grid, correct? Is it going to give us the option to build? Yes, it will. Good. Connect to the power grid, please, peoples. Ba-da-ba-da-ba-da. -ba -da -ba -da. Up to it, guys. What are we waiting on? Who's who's waiting? Oh, he's like traveling from across the globe here. This is uh, this uh, drone number six, Johnny number six. They've already supplied it with the fuel which it needs. Now that we have operational shuttles, it's time to establish a mining dome. Excellent. Colonists can work in some outside buildings placed. Uh, close to their domes, such as extractors for metal and rare metals. Since colonists will be needed for the extraction of these underground deposits, it's a good practice to place domes near such deposits as uh, is the case in this simulation. Construct a rare metal extractor next to the rare metal deposit and connect it to the power grid using power cables. Alright, so this new dome is going to have uh, a rare metals extraction. It's a nice one, 553 rare metals, an average grade. <clears throat> it seems like it's a normal underground, not a deep metal, which is a good thing to make note of when you are building. I think this is the order they want us in. Yes. Uh, the reason it matters on the placement is because the direction of the... Uh, this is the front of it, essentially, or this is the output side of it, where it builds... Uh, where it actually extracts and dumps the resources when extracted. So we're waiting on 20 metals. Good, there's a big pile of, a uh, big supply of metals there. And I think they've gathered some from the far side as well. Oh, there's more metals on the ground. You don't need to harvest those metals if they're within range of your drone, or your domes, your drones rather, when built, that's not a drone hub, this one. If the metals sit within range of the drone, Cable uh, fault reported. and you demand a build project that uses the metals, they will gather them from there. It's not, uh, it doesn't hurt to gather them ahead of time, but it also doesn't hurt to uh, let them just build it as they come. We need to, need to connect to power here, so let's go ahead and get that going as well. You're going to go like this. Let's do a nice little zigzaga. <clears throat> it is a hex system, so you can't just run a straight line from here to here. This is a straight line in the hex world. All right, finish there up. Are yes, no there are no colonists <clears throat> in the mining dome. We must provide living space for the colonists so they can move there. Excellent. Uh, once we've provided the dome with living space, colonists from the other dome will be able to shuttle in, or resettle rather, in, <laughs> spoilers, 
provided this is within workable distance, uh, walkable distance, or there is available shuttles to fly them there. Construct a living quarters. Okay, they're they're definitely taking us by the Don't hand. Don't forget do to this. provide basic services for the citizens of your new dome. These people at Paradox have a different, or at Hymamont Games have an interesting um, criteria of what basic services is. Notice how they didn't originally say build a shopping center. They put the the space lab as a priority. I, I find that amusing. Space lab and then grocery. I don't want to build a grocery there. That's terrible. Well, it's not a terrible spot for it. It's not a great spot for it, though. I suppose it doesn't matter. If this thing is, if this pie has three uh, medium-sized units, it's gonna, you know, build them at any. Um, <clears throat> it, it'll use the space. You can you can use all the space. That's what I'm trying to say. Living quarters constructed. Look at that. These are highlighted, suggesting that these are reserved slots for colonists all the way already on their way in. Now I'm going to pause this for a second. I'm just curious if this dome has like uh, unemployment. Yeah, they got a bunch of unemployment here. So they stocked us with a dome that has research labs, grocers, diner, infirmary. It's got a hydroponics uh, farm, but nothing else. <clears throat> nothing else to work. So. There's some unemployed people there, so given the fact that they're unemployed and there's another place to work that also has employment, demanding four jobs there, and uh, is this set up? This is not quite built yet. This will demand four or two? I think two. You can set up filters for every dome to attract colonists with desired traits and block or push out colonists with undesired ones. Select the dome and open the filter screen from its info panel. Right up here, filter by trait. Being near a rare metals <clears throat> deposit, this dome is best suited as a mining hub. So it's best to encourage geologists to migrate here. Uh, and because we want to make sure that the research dome gets all the available scientists, we'll also ban scientists from inhabiting this dome. Goal from the special uh, from the specialization category. Activate the thumbs up icon on the geologist and thumbs down on the scientists. Good. So specialization. We want a thumbs down. We don't want scientists, but we definitely want to encourage the. Oh, this is chamber Lindo. We want to encourage the geologists. Next dome. This dome has been designated for research purposes, so it's best to attract more colonists with the scientist specialization. And because we want to make sure that the mining dome gets all the available geologists, which is the best suited to work inside the extractor buildings, <coughs> pardon me, we will also ban geologists from inhabiting this dome. Same deal backwards. Scientists, we encourage scientists here and we ban them from here. Now, banning them from here automatically shoves them to the other one, and banning them from the other one automatically shoves them over here. So if we only had these two domes, it wouldn't matter. You could, only, you could do away with only doing Colonists one of Colonists can those. migrate between domes using shuttles or walking when they are positioned close to one another. However, they cannot usually visit buildings in nearby domes on a daily basis unless they are connected to their own dome. To demonstrate dome connection, first, uh, let's first build a new dome near our research dome. All right, the research dome is here now. The range on this dome, I don't know if uh, uh, I don't know if they're going to tell us the number. So let's let's see if they do. Let's build another dome. <clears throat> we want to stick it right down in there, like they have requested, i.e., or demanded. Now you come over this way, sir. What? Yeah, you come over this way, sir. Thank you. <laughs> oh, look at the shuttles going, eh? They're buzzing around and delivering things. Well, there they are. There's the shuttles. Look at them. They're like, okay, we got things to pick up. <coughs> They'll deliver. Oh, that's a person being delivered there. Cool. They're shuffling people back and forth. Now, shuttles, uh, people get priority for the shuttle work. As far as I understand it, they get the uh, um, highest priority for activity of the shuttles. How much concrete is left to build? Well, we kind of don't need to help them. 
They're already pretty much done that. <clears throat> Come on, guys, faster, faster. There you go. We'll use cable those fault them reported. In real quick. I don't care about the cable faults, thank you. There we go. Everything is in place. And that'll clean they'll clean up the mess automatically. Basic dome being constructed. It goes faster the more of them that arrive. If you wanted, for instance, to stop construction on this, you could click this and stop. Little pro hit, dare I say. Turn off the construction. That's not gonna stop it. See they're still building? I gotta have to take all these guys and stop them from working. Another one there, another one there. Oh no! How many of you guys are stacked in one spot? There we go. We've stopped it. Now this guy is on his way over to help, I think. Now, we've paused it. Now, interestingly enough, you can leave a dome like that indefinitely. You can leave any building like that indefinitely. Alright? It's not going to take any damage. It's not going to use any maintenance. It's not going to use up any resources. And the moment we are ready to go, we just tell somebody to finish it off. Or we reactivate it, and everybody goes, hey, I'll help out. Make sense? Really good for pre planning. Construct two farms with in the new dome. They will be used as workplaces for the colonists in the old dome once the domes are connected. Ooh, look at microdome. Barrel dome. Passages. In, oh, excellent. So cool. I haven't seen them yet. I'm super excited. All right, right in there. That is a terrible spot for that. It, uh, this is about the only spot, that was about the only spot that you could use that would wreck the rest of the room. I could put one there, but I can't put any three pieces there. I could put three guys in here instead of two. But, that's the way they tell me to put it, so I will obey like a good little boy. Uh, use a dome. Okay. <coughs> Pardon me. Construct the two farms in the new dome. That we use for workplaces, and they were, this thing is not powered, it's not connected. I guess they're going to tell us how that, how to do that next, because that is going to be a deal. It will be important. Alright, the buildings are in place. Domes positioned closely to each other may be connected with passages. Passages allow colonists to travel safely to dome, to domes directly connected to their own seeking work or services there. Connect the research dome to the newly constructed dome with a passage. So <clears throat> the range is uh, fairly limited. Does it say here? Um, it has to start and end in, you basically grab this, it has to start and end in one of the hexes that are legitimate uh, locations for the, there we go, for the dome. So I could like shift click to move it weird directions. If I'm holding shift here, that works, okay? there to there is what they want us to build let's see if they can get that in place real quick for us <clears throat> go little guys look at them all buzzing around making things happen uh, this is just built with concrete all these passages which is very convenient the amount of concrete I think is determined by the length don't quote me on that but I think it is Can we hear you guys? 19. Really? You had to wait for one extra? Okay. Now we're going to build it. Everybody should help. Look at them all swarming over. He needs to go get juiced up again. There we go. Build it real quick for us. It's a beautiful, beautiful feature. Are you guys building fast? Are you in fast mode? Are you going to faster fast mode? That is a very slow building process. <clears throat> That's alright, there's a lot of you working and building that thing. I did not realize they were that slow to build. Almost done, just a little bit, a little touch up on the entrance. He's building from the inside. That's cool. Come on. Good there job. There we go. Good job, thanks. Uh, now that the two domes are connected, colonists from the first dome uh, can start working on the newly built farms in the third dome. Passengers will also connect the two dome passages will also connect the two domes for the purpose of distributing power, water, and oxygen. Super, super great feature. This thing has zero maintenance. This passage. 
permanently done, built with concrete, no maintenance. Some buildings can have upgrades that can improve them in various ways. All upgrades become available after specific technologies are researched and have construction costs. Furthermore, some upgrades will increase the resource consumption of buildings. Uh, research the extractor amplification tech research in the research screen. Amplification tech close. Good, thank you. It only costs apparently. Did that just say it costs 200 to research that? That's a little cheap. A little bit of a cheat. Everything else is a thousand, but in that, in this tutorial, they're giving us, giving it us the tech for 200. So yeah, beautiful passages. Don't bother connecting domes to each other or to the network that uh, with power and whatnot because that is a waste of resources. Once they have the passage, it is connected. As far as I know, it's also impervious to damage. Uh, it might be able to be damaged by meteors, I think, possibly. Uh, it may be damaged by uh, dust devils, but not maintenance. It has no maintenance, so that's a big deal. Um, what was I supposed to be doing? What are you, what are you guys doing? You're, uh, you're doing stuff? What's our current uh, objective? Oh yes, to do this research. Right, can you finish please? Outsource? Can we just outsource you? There you go. That, that, won't, that won't hurt me later, right? It won't come back to bite me. A couple hours and it'll be done. No. Congratulations. With the research complete, a new <clears throat> upgrade for your extractors is now available. Is it is not automatically activated in your buildings. You must construct it first. Okay, so once you got the science, you can then do that you don't actually get. So, water extractor, select the upgrade. So we need basically our situation here is that we have zero water gain. We're consuming, we're producing, wow, producing 5.8, and we are consuming 5.8. If you ever get off map, just double click or click on the uh, Kellogg, <laughs> and this is uh, Chamberlain, and this is Dome One. Um, yeah, just click on the domes or anything down here, and you can jump to them. Beautiful domes, beautiful little round domes. Um, upgrade the water extractor. So we are at 5.8 of a total 5.8. One from this, 4.8 here. So let's upgrade this guy. Nice work. Uh, that was instant. Oh no, it wasn't. Upgrade. Uh, it's it, it was just nice work because I did the job. Uh, now wait for the domes to the begin. The upgrade has been constructed. Excellent. Some upgrades will consume more power and water while active. After an upgrade has been constructed, it may be turned on and off the same button that it was that was used to construct it, right up here. Thanks. Costing 10 more power, it normally costs 5, costs 10 more power and goes from 3.8 to... what? The command center is a treasure trove of information about the colony. Ah. It offers a historical data of various colonists colony metrics as well as um, overview of domes, buildings, colonists, and transportation. Open the command center and try it out. Oh, hello, command center. You're new. Are you new? Did I know of you before? Graphics. Cool. Colonists, drone, um, drones, power, stored power, oxygen and water, stockpiled supplies. Oh, this is cool. Pretty, uh, Pretty micromanagey or metagamey. I don't know what the term would be for that. Ah, this status. There is a problem here. These two are linked. It has one link. And two jobs. Zero homes. It's a. It's not a super finished dome. Uh, drone hubs and their capacity. I see. Okay, we can add and remove people from it. Good. Uh, construct new shuttles. That's cool. See, we can actually queue up a new shuttle. Shuttle construction one, two, three. Cool. All right, back we go. Tells about all our columnists. That's fantastic. Their traits. I see. Their happiness. Lovely. Their abilities, their interests. Wonderful. This is pretty cool. All the buildings that we have, everything that's going on. What is this? Other buildings. Drone hubs and things. Cool. Lots of stuff in there. Let's uh, continue, though. Uh, let's do Extractor AI, and let's do that. And that, and that, and that. Congratulations, Commander. 
You have graduated from the International Mars Mission Training Simulator. <laughs> Excellent. That's one of the uh, International Mars Mission is one of the sponsors. They're the super easy mode, everything epic mode. Um, yeah, a team of mission and mission control is eager to meet you and serve to and serve under your command. The challenge of conquering Mars for the sake of humankind is still a tough one. But with a commander and as skillful and resourceful as you, the task seems a bit easier now. The colonization of Mars awaits. Good luck, Commander. May the cosmos be with you. Fantastic. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us on this little tutorial series. Uh, just a five-parter. That's it for today. Um, I am really eager to uh, hear your feedback and thoughts for a new series. This one will be running um, in you know one... Basically, over the five days, it'll give me enough time to gather some data from people who are interested in uh, giving their feedback. What uh, sort of map do you want to see? Either details or descriptions about it. Uh, the settings you might want to see in the game. A map location would be great. Uh, if you're thinking some sort of storyline behind it or some sort of uh, concept of how we should play. Uh, a role play side to things, perhaps. Any of that content, put it down in the comments of any of these videos here any of my videos on surviving mars i will be watching for the comments for you but <clears throat> pardon me if you are new to the channel please go ahead and hit that subscribe button join it we do have two other series the 985 uh, max difficulty uh challenge from last month and the previous to that we did an arc um church of the new arc uh episode or series so check those out if you're interested in more content and there's more content to come so please do uh get in the comments there and let me know what you think or hop over onto the link down below for the discord in the description of all my videos pop into the discord and uh, let's get chatting about what uh, type of things you want to see you can give lots of details and get feedback there but uh as this is the end of the series thank you so much hitting like will really help me out i appreciate it and uh, remember to come back next time for some more surviving mars let's play and as always, I will see you in game. Please don't go. The drones need you. They look up to you.